I'm Phil, and this is the Minuteman Moment. This past year, America saw all sorts of headlines with the Second Amendment connection. First, there's the Bruin decision at the Supreme Court, and states passing more gun control in the aftermath. To the mass murderers in Uvalde and Buffalo that prompted openly unconstitutional legislation from Congress, there was a lot to digest. And now, as we approach Election Day, the debate over guns will play out in the ballot box, and we are confident about which way a lot of Americans are gonna go. Despite the Supreme Court's precedent in Bruin, which is already having ripple effects on unconstitutional gun laws across the country, anti-gun legislators in both parties, at every level of government, are doubling down, or even just compromising away your rights, because a vocal minority is demanding that they, quote, do something. This phrase is emotionally compelling to some people, and it's unfortunately led to bad policy like the gun control package we saw this last June. So think about it. Just 48 hours after the Bruin decision, President Biden signed a major gun control package into law that among other provisions, now regulates adults 18 to 21 to second class citizens. Nothing could be more frustrating, especially with that Supreme Court decision that had just came down. But hey, the Senate couldn't let a good decision from the Supreme Court get in its way. Then we have Governor Hochul in New York, who teamed up with her legislature to very quickly pass a highly restrictive concealed carry law, only after their previous and less restrictive law was overturned by the nation's highest court. In neighboring New Jersey, legislators are poised to go even further by requiring individuals to obtain liability insurance to carry guns. These policies are not gonna stand any kind of judicial scrutiny, and you only need to look at the comments from the judge in our suit against New York's Concealed Carry Improvement Act. The judge was quoted in that case as saying, in an attempt to curb an increase in mass shootings, the New York State Legislature generated an unconstitutional statute. And if you need more evidence, just look to Winchester, Virginia, where GOA won a court case against a local ordinance that prohibited carry in a lot of public locations. Or in Philadelphia, where we secured a permanent injunction against the anti-gun mayor's latest gun grab in less than a week after passage of that law. And what makes this more frustrating for GOA is that while crime is spiking across the country and the issue is at the top of voters' minds, anti-gunners appear to be more focused on ensuring their constituents have no means to effectively protect themselves. But this isn't true for all congressmen. GOA has worked with a lot of pro-gun congressmen and senators to bring the most no-compromise bills in any session. We've worked with Senator Marshall to help introduce the SHORT Act. We've worked with Representative Chip Roy to introduce the first ever AOW deregulation bill, and with Representative Cloud on the No Registry Rights Bill. Elections are important to both elect and re-elect staunch Second Amendment defenders while also replacing the phonies and the anti-Second Amendment members. In Congress, senators from some of the most pro-gun states in the country have sold you down the river. But instead of fearing their own voters, these same congressmen just don't care. Out of the 15 GOP senators who voted for this last summer's gun control bill, only two are up for re-election this year. One already had his primary election before the vote, and the other is in a ranked choice voting system, which gives kind of a skewed advantage to anti-gun pro-compromise constituents in this case. And in the House, most members who voted for the gun control bill are dodging those angry pro-gun voters. Of the 14 who voted for the bill, five aren't even running for re-election. A third of Republican members who voted for the gun control bill and were running for re-election lost during the primaries. That should tell you something. And even of those six who won their primary, all but one of them had their primary before they voted for the gun control package. So in other words, the timing of this last summer's gun control bill was done to protect vulnerable members from constituents who want them to support the Second Amendment. That being said, every single Democrat in both chambers voted for this unconstitutional bill. And so to make this election a referendum on gun control, Democrats need to see massive losses just like they did in the 90s after the assault weapons ban was passed into law to remind them to never vote for gun control. The voters are demanding one thing, but the representatives are doing something very different. While the courts are a viable option, there's actually maybe a better way to do it. 
voting, specifically voting anti-gun politicians out of office. Thankfully, we're gonna have our chance again soon, and it looks pretty much all but guaranteed that the Second Amendment will be more favored come January in both Washington and across the states. Like we warned the anti-gun crowd after the Bruin decision, come into compliance and ensure our constitutional rights are protected, or we, the voters, will force you to. That's it for now, we'll see you next time.